Okay, let's go back to Revelation 19. And we'll read verse 11. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. All right, the marriage supper, we're saying, okay, let's go down for our honeymoon now. Jesus says to the bride, all right, come on, honey. Okay, wedding's over, now let's go down for our honeymoon. What's the honeymoon? Oh, it's going to be a long, it's going to be a long ride at a blink of an eye, and it's going to be bloody. So make sure that you're, so get ready. Your garments, your, your white garment is going to get drenched, honey. Amen. Your white wedding gown is going to be drenched. It's going to be stained, so get ready. You might say, what are you talking about, Pastor? So let's see. He saw heaven opened, right? And then notice that a white horse came out. Is that correct? So this is the story. The story is that the husband and the wife, they're coming down on their honeymoon on white horses. And as they go down on uh, white horses, Lord God Almighty himself, he's going to have it where... Uh, this is not really a horse, obviously, but you can excuse this author over here as he tries to draw what he could. But um, as they go down on white horses over here, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is going to ride on it. And then the white garments, those are following, are on white garments. And as they come down in white garments, the beast, the false prophet and his armies Remember at Revelation 16, I mentioned that they're getting ready for battle over here against God. And then the Lord Jesus Christ himself, he just comes down and just wipes out that entire army. And that blood goes, reaches up to the garments, the bottom of the garments, the white garments. So that's where your stains come from. It comes from the stain of the blood of God's enemies. And you might go, what in the world? So that is, God, that is God's, that is your wedding drive, so to speak. Hollywood, do you, did you notice that they have a red carpet? You notice royalty would have that? Did you ever wonder why they would have that? The reason why they would have that is because it is foretelling what Jesus Christ would do when he comes down, his red carpet. Amen. When he comes down in his red carpet over here, it's going to come down like red blood. Yeah, that's where your red carpet comes from over here. It comes down through red blood over here. So then Jesus Christ, he just destroys and wipes out his enemy. And the blood just goes everywhere. You know why? Because you got the whole world fighting against God. And then as this whole world tries to fight against God, the blood just goes down for miles, miles long. And then it reaches up to the, right over here to the horse bridle, etc. To the bottom of your garments. Why? Because this is wrath. This is judgment. This is not, well, what happened to love? What happened to grace? The age of grace is over. You're in it now. You're in the age of grace and love now. So, my friend, today is the day of salvation. Because if not that day, then you're going to go through the day of the Lord. And that day of the Lord is going to be so terrible, so scary, that there's no such thing as love. When they see Jesus, you think that they're going to cry out and say, second chance, second chance. No, Jesus Christ is too late. Bam! Amen. See, God's not kidding around. That's why you better get saved today while Jesus is pleading with you. He's calling. He did not give up calling you. The song is still going. There's room at the cross for you. Though millions have come, there's still room for one. Yes, there's room at the cross for you. So you better receive them while you still have the chance. And they call this hate now, huh? Isn't that amazing? They call this hate wrath when you're preaching to them the gospel. They don't know what hate is. They do not know what wrath is. This is hatred and God's wrath over here. And the people are just being wiped out. All right, so let's continue reading on. Heaven open, and behold, a white horse. So it's going to be a white horse. Now, this is very different from the... Go to Revelation 6 and keep your hand at Revelation 19. Keep your hand at Revelation 6, and then I also want you to go to Revelation chapter 19, okay? Now, as this horse comes down, it is a white horse... 
And it is different from the horse of Revelation 6. A lot of people, they're going to confuse the horse of Revelation chapter 6 with the horse of Revelation chapter 19. They think, now this is blasphemy and this is heretical. Be careful. You're going to see people teaching that the horse of Revelation chapter 6 is the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, did you remember our previous Revelation studies? Yep. Who is the horse of Revelation 6? That ain't Jesus Christ. Christ. Yeah, it's the Antichrist, false Christ. Notice that this Antichrist is so much trying to imitate Jesus Christ that even saved Christian scholars think that that horse rider of Revelation 6 is Jesus. That's how dangerous it is. That's how extremely dangerous it's getting. Now, let's look at Revelation chapter 6. How many crowns is that horse rider of Revelation 6 wearing? Read it. Don't believe me like a tree full of owls. Read it. How, ma how many crowns? One. Look at Revelation 19. Okay? Look at verse 12. How many crowns? Many crowns. That's why there's a song that goes what? Crown him with many crowns, the lamb upon his throne. So the Lord Jesus Christ, he has not just one crown, but it is many crowns that he's going to be wearing. Why? Because he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be honored and worshipped and adored. So that's why he deserves all the crowns. Well, why does he have many crowns? Uh, perhaps because of all the saints who threw their crowns at his feet or because of all nations around the world who had to cast out their crowns and give it to him. And Jesus, right, Jesus said, that's right, America belongs to me. Uh, Korea belongs to me. China belongs to me. Russia belongs to me. Saudi Arabia, Israel belongs to me. All of them belong to me. Now you globalists cast your crowns at my feet. I'm going to take it away. And he's going to rule them with a rod of iron, actually. Now, also notice the distinction here. Verse 11 of Revelation 19, keep your hand at Revelation 6, we're looking at this. Revelation 19, it says uh, in verse 11, And he that sat upon him was called what? Faithful and true. Capital, he's faithful and true. Amen. Why? Because he never broke a promise with Amen. you. He'll never lie to you. And in righteousness, he does judge and make war. Notice that when he makes war and he judges people, this is known as righteousness. Can I repeat that again? When you see a bunch of slaughtered people of millions of millions dead all over the ground, this is known as righteousness. Wow, why would he say that? Because he will never judge a person unfairly, wrongly. So you got to understand this. When there is eternal hellfire, or when God even does the smallest chastisement to his child, you got to understand this, he will never do it wrongly. He's going to do it fairly, for a good reason, righteously. It's righteous, it's holy. So when you hear about this story where Jesus Christ comes down and then wipes down all of his enemies, that his garments are dipped in blood, you got to realize that's righteousness. Why? Because these people are so evil and wicked that judgment has to be cast. A lot of people, they really don't think about this. They don't realize that evil has to be punished. Amen. They all think about love and grace, love and grace, but when you keep doing that, people who are genuinely evil, they don't care how much love and grace you give to them, they will abuse it, and they will laugh at your face. So you got to realize that's the reason why that there has to be justice and judgment, not more social programs and defund the police and etc. stuff like that. You got to realize when people are evil, evil ha how you judge evil is that judgment has to be cast, punishment. Yeah, right. yeah. Not social program and let's convince them. No, they'll laugh you off during therapy. Yeah. All right, let's look at Revelation 19. Amen to that. Revelation 19. Keep your eye on Revelation 6 because we're going to keep seeing the differences, okay? Verse 12, his eyes were as a flame of love. <laughs> flame of what? Fire. Okay, you think that he's loving over here or he's mad? He's mad. He's mad. Where do you think Superman got the laser eyes from, right? Always copycatting the Bible. And on his head were many crowns, right? Crown him with many crowns. 
Now, isn't this interesting? Why would his head have many crowns? Because there is one being who had several heads and many crowns, and that's Satan. Remember the great red dragon? A lot of you forgot that old foe, right? The great red dragon, if you recall, this being, this Leviathan, this behemoth, this devil, he had many heads, if you might recall. This serpent, the old adversary, that serpent, which is called the devil, and Satan. Satan himself, he had several heads, we remember that, and ten crowns. Do you remember that? So he had several heads, and then he also had ten crowns on his head. But then the Lord Jesus Christ, it's different. It's where he has one head, and then what does it say? Crown him with what? Many crowns. Satan, all he can get is ten, but Jesus Christ has many crowns on him. Okay, so this being, all he, can con all he can conjure up is just a few crowns on his head. And then we saw those kingdoms, those empires that Satan tried to do. But Jesus Christ, he's going to take them all back for himself. Amen. And then he's going to have his crowns wipe out the devils. The middle of verse 12, and he had a name written that no man knew. So Jesus has a name that's written. So on him, there's a written name, but no man knows but he himself. Only he knows the name. What is that name? Some people think that it's verse 13, the word of God, because it's a name that's written. Now, I'm going to propose this. So here's an interesting theory. I think that it is a name that we don't really know. I don't think it's uh, the word of God. You might say, why? Because I think that when he comes down on Armageddon, he already has multiple names. Because at verse 13, he's called the word of God. Verse 16, he's got a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So it could be that one too. We don't know which name. So I think I just believe the word literally as it says at verse 12, it's a name that no man knew, see? It's a name that no man knows. This happened one time before at the book of Exodus. My hand's at Revelation 6, Pastor. Yeah, keep it there or bookmark it. But go to Exodus now. We're going to look at Exodus chapter 6. Exodus chapter 6. A possibility could be the word Jehovah. But I don't think that's really the case because the reason why is that it's already given out. So we're going to look at the book of Exodus chapter 6. But he did do that before. He did have a name where he doesn't identify himself or let the people know. And he did with one of them, which is Jehovah. Look at verse 3. Exodus chapter 6 verse 3. And I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of God Almighty. But by my name, what? Jehovah was not, was I not known to them. He didn't reveal his name Jehovah. As a matter of fact, a lot of Jews today, they would say they don't really know God's name. And then with these Hebrew consonants where our English translators put that as to Jehovah, if you, if you try to pronounce it, they would sometimes slap you because that name is so holy. That's why in the Old Testament, if you took God's name in vain, they stoned you to death. That's how valuable it is. So, you, so everyone should be careful when they take God's name in vain. I don't even believe, you got to realize this too, Bible believers should not even do what they call Christian cussing. You might say, what is Christian cussing? It's using the cuss words but putting a Christian uh, filter over it. So, oh my G-O-D, they replace it with oh my G-O-S-H. That should not be spoken by people. Some of you should not be saying that. You might say, why? Because that name is so holy. Why are you trying to even go close to it? So you got to stay away from that stuff, that mess. Uh, this is what I believe. What I believe is this, is that the names of God, there's a basic doctrine. A basic doctrine called the names of God. And guess what? All that you learn about the names of God, you didn't get all his names. That's my answer. You notice, uh, oh, is that the case? Yeah, it did, because look at Exodus. He gave his, one of his names to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God Almighty. 
But his other name, Jehovah, he didn't give to them. See that? Revelation 19. Did you read those verses? He already has two names there. The Word of God and also King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So his name is endless, actually. So when Jehovah Witnesses say, what is the name of God? The name of God is Jehovah. That's what they will say. Uh, God's only name is Jehovah. There is no other name. No, that's wrong. Because if you look at Exodus chapter 6, verse 3, God even says here that I have two names over here. So when Jehovah Witnesses try to scare you and they use the book of Psalms on you, that God's name alone is Jehovah, that means God does not have any other name. It can't include Jesus, so Jesus cannot be God, etc. That is wrong. God has many names. What the book of Psalms is saying, my name alone is Jehovah, is very simple. God's name alone should have that title Jehovah. My name or other people's names should not claim that title Jehovah, that name Jehovah for themselves. That's the simple answer. All right? I don't have, I cannot claim that name. Nobody else can claim that name except God's name alone can take that word Jehovah as its name. Isn't that simple? I mean, they think that God only has one name. No, he has many names. He has many crowns.